cease for a resurgent India is the new mantra of the Indian Navy and with me is the Chief of the Naval Staff, Admiral R.K. Dhawan. Admiral, welcome on headlines today. You had 2611 and then you have an incident where Pakistan naval ship Zulfikar is virtually taken over by terrorists. How has the nature of threat changed, Admiral? Well, the threat uh, perception in the maritime domain in the 21st century has indeed changed because uh, nobody imagined that in the 21st century we would be grappling with pirates or indeed the fact that the major threat would be in the form of asymmetric warfare or maritime terrorism. Uh, these are serious issues and have changed the complexity because the global commons are not benign anymore and the vulnerabilities have increased and so have the threat perception. We have to take all this into account. So, when you see a when you see a Pakistan ship on the high seas, how do you react now? Well, when we see a Pakistan uh, ship on the high seas, uh, then we uh, treat them as any other vessel on the high seas. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we are in international waters, and uh, so are they. So, uh, we there are procedures they come. But I, I, are you, a, you know, is there a sense of skepticism that this could be a terrorist ship or terrorists would have taken control? Well, the, uh, there are procedures laid down how we establish communication with another warship that we meet up at sea. And uh, all those procedures as well as the surveillance that we have around our ships, uh, either in terms of its own equipment, in terms of the radar, electronic warfare sensors, or by helicopters that could be operating, uh, we take into account as whether this particular warship is a threat. Uh, when we talk about the Indian Ocean region, it's not just Pakistan that we're dealing with or threat from Pakistan uh, in, in our waters. We see the Chinese submarines lurking in our areas. They recently visited Colombo. Is that a threat? How do you view that? Well, as you're aware, the uh, PLA Navy has been operating in the Indian Ocean region since 2008. Uh, they have uh, and press and uh, they have been deploying their anti-piracy escort force uh, ever since 2008 result of which uh, ships from the Kerala Navy uh, are regularly present in the waters of the Indian Ocean region. And uh, yes, we've had uh, a conventional submarine on the spot uh, visiting um, Sri Lanka and also operating in the Indian Ocean region. And that is something that we monitor all the time. Is that a cause for concern? It is a cause uh, for concern, but we monitor to take uh, note of uh, that particular situation. So, uh, how should India be reacting to uh, Chinese vessels in the Indian Ocean region? Uh, the string of pearls that we hear about, how is Navy tackling that? Well, these are two different issues that you raised. Uh, these are global problems and uh, these are international problems. And indeed, uh, warships and submarines from different navies operate in international waters uh, to pursue their own maritime interests. And that is what uh, Chinese uh, ships and submarines are doing. As far as the uh, development of maritime infrastructure that we refer to, uh, this is an activity uh, which we monitor because it is an activity that is happening in our uh, area of interest. Okay. Uh, the Navy underwent a string of unfortunate accidents. The Navy suffered these accidents. Uh, if you were to specifically talk of INS Sindhuraksha, what do we know? Why did that happen? Well, firstly, I must say that you know any accident that takes place in the Navy is uh, a serious issue. And uh, we take uh, very careful note of it and analyze as to why that accident happened. And before even the boards of inquiry are in place, because they are tedious and they take a long time to the procedure, we make sure that we put in remedial measures in place. Uh, so as to see that the procedures, the safety audits, aspect related to maintenance, aspect related to material failure, all those aspects are reiterated so that the procedures are diligently followed by all concerned. Why did Sindhu Raksha happen? Sindhu Raksha happened for perhaps a series of issues. Uh, it was certainly a very, very serious accident to happen. Uh, but uh, there are a large number of issues which could have led to Sindhu Raksha happening. Aspects related to aspect related to material, aspect related to the SOPs or the procedures which were needed to be followed, the aspect related to the planning of what was going on on board at that point in time as an activity. So it's a series of aspects that could have led to that Okay. Our submarine fleet sadly is depleting uh, new acquisitions uh, and Godwilling Scorpion, the first of the series, comes in 2016 end. 
So how do you deal with the depleting post trends? Well, the uh, Navy takes stock always of the inventory that it had uh, because uh, you have to fight today's war with today's assets. So we have taken stock of our inventory and made sure that our operational complete cycles, which are the maintenance and the operational cycle, have been looked at to see that the submarines that we have in our inventory are well maintained and are combat ready. So that is taking care of the current inventory. We've also looked at the aspect as how to give a service life extension to some of our submarines where it is possible, both in the EKM as well as the SSD category. Then, of course, as you mentioned, uh, we have looked at the delivery schedule and the construction program of the Scorpies to see that there will be no further delays and that the first one rolls out as we have planned in September 2016 and the follow ons soon thereafter. And, of course, uh, in the procurement aspect, there's the next one, which is 75 India. Uh, where now the uh, recent decision uh, which has been taken and the process has now started to look at the aspect to make all the six submarines in the country. The Prime Minister has a dream of uh, the economy as a resurgent economy. How is the Navy coming in sync with his dream of you know, trade and economy and free flow of systems? Well, uh, India is essentially a maritime nation and we have huge maritime interests. Uh, these maritime interests, as you know, 90% of our trade is by sea. Uh, we have a huge coastline, 7,516 kilometers, which we have an exclusive economic zone of over 2 million square kilometers. And this area is rich in various aspects, whether it is the oil and offshore oil and gas, whether it's the aspect of the fish that are available in the water, whether it's the aspect of deep sea mining or the uh, polymetallic nodules that are available. We have a resurgent shipbuilding industry. Uh, we have our island chains in Andaman and Nicobar, where infrastructure development is required. All these maritime immigrants have a vital relationship with the nation's economic growth because they are intrinsically linked with the economy. And therefore, it is the responsibility of the Indian Navy to see that India's maritime interests, which have a vital relationship with the nation's economic growth, are allowed to develop unhindered both in peace and war. Admiral, many thanks for speaking to headlines today. Pleasure. Yes.